in this video I will be teaching you or not really teaching you but explaining maybe why you should consider moving to Africa and to be very particular mm, I've really traveled to a lot of African countries maybe we should count wait before then my fishes are enjoying so these things you see these are fish feeds this one see so the fishes eat that maybe this one i want to give we've, we've eaten this so i want to give it to some animals that i own see a lot of fishes they are here see so anyway in this video i'll be saying maybe why you should move to africa for a very long time people have always thought that africa is one dangerous two poor three full of disease uh, four not suitable for business or no opportunities are there and five very hot just to mention but a few so yesterday we did a serious cleaning of uh, this fish pond okay this tree you see they are not uh, mura mura uh, mura Kidogo, kidogo, kidogo tu. Eh, kuja na jembe. Ukuja na jembe, tatu nilichembe mra. Kuja na jembe, jembe, kuja nayo. I told him to come with the jembe. He'll see. See, this is the problem I have with my boys here. They don't care after they use this. But I'll fix that. I want him to plant this tree. Otherwise, it will be left here. It will be left here. So, yesterday we did a serious cleaning. And we opened spaces of water. So now, the water comes from... This water is naturally from the ground. Okay? So, that being said... That's why you see it's very dirty. It's, it's not this dirty on a normal day i want him to plant this tree otherwise that tree will be forgotten i'm trying to see where it can be planted maybe even somewhere here why not mura so guys, we've planted the tree. You can see. This tree here is that tree you see over there. Maybe I go closer and you see. So what I was telling you is we, we cleaned this fish pond yesterday, especially this part because it's natural. The water comes from below naturally. That's why the water looks dirty. But on a normal time we need also to clean this fish pond on a normal time uh, the water becomes very clear and uh, you see here we have fishes on this other side see? I think you guys can see some of them you see they are going but the water is becoming more clear clear and as you keep going this way it becomes really clear so that tree we just planted over there uh, we need to clean this fish pond see here we have small ones that tree we just planted over there is this tree in my local language we call it esebe esebe this one these are trees with milk they have milk in them this type of trees they're very good in water catchment areas 
and also these trees make one of the greatest shades of all times look this will show you when we were building this house this was a very small tree now it has totally grown and every day is growing massively many people have told me Marwa it's very close to the house maybe it can break the house yeah before we had to dig down here and we cut all the roots and the tree went this way that's why you see the roots they are right here they are right here going this way okay very stable very nice and this one even you can even cut a stick like this and plant it and it will be okay so what was i telling you and this video is why maybe you should consider mura takuja kukuona eh habari yako ai takuja kukuona the young guy here who came and asked me habari yako he asked me if i could help him musically he's an artist i told him the day i will buy my instruments here because i we have a music studio in the villa but it's just a room we need to equip it with the uh, equipment and actually guys if you can support us in one way or the other i really appreciate maybe you have a speaker that you never use you have a, a guitar that you never use piano that you never use i'll be more than happy to ask you to donate it to the village and when we'll have that music studio over there it will not just be my music studio and i'm promising that here on camera it will be a music studio that i'll open to the community and people can easily come here and do their music even that young guy maybe this video will may end up me talking to him and maybe he will tell you his dreams so why you should move you should consider to move to africa me personally i was born here in the village here right here where i'm making this video and uh, i've seen things change so much like really 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 much okay one of the things that has really changed is technology technology has reached africa technology has reached the village for example right now you are able to watch me here out of technology me also as marwa as a content creator from africa i've been able to achieve a lot for example travel the world to over 70 countries without repeating if we repeat we'll be around 100 countries okay and we have been able to do that just because of technology because long time ago everybody thought especially people who have not been to africa as africa being a dark continent like nothing good can come out of africa but i am a living testimony that things can actually change and actually africa is the promised land and i will explain for example right now look at this we have solar look how bright it is every single day every single day it's like this look even how this pigeon is enjoying down there maybe if i go closer it, it may feel i'm disturbing it and it will fly away but if you're able to see it was sleeping it has moved a little bit because maybe i'm pointing it look look even this one's here they are quite enjoying just chill they are not shocked they are not running away they're just enjoying it's very simple life okay so people have always shown africa as dangerous uh, very poor and things like that and i will be explaining step by step why you should move to africa and for me i'll say for example kenya is a very good country and not because that i'm from here but it happened to be that kenya is a very good country rio how are you rio papa you doing good this is one of my horses big male horse look it has grown even muscles now can you see even it has veins look at the veins i hope it doesn't kick my camera out but i'm showing you how the horse has grown and it's shining you see shining because it has adapted so look you can actually own horses in africa you know 
So, number one, Africa is not poor. Okay? This horse is sleeping. That's how they sleep. Can you imagine? The sun is hot a little bit and it's, it's uh, resting. Because these horses, 24 7, they are grazing. Number one is Africa is not poor the way people actually tell you. The only thing you should understand is most people from abroad they don't want competition so and mostly corporations and so what they do is they tell you oh don't go to Africa because their their reasoning is as much as they will discourage you and you get scared to visit and see Africa for yourself then you'll stay away from the competition that probably you will bring if you come to Africa and they're already here you know something like that so all they do is scare you with news they scare you sometimes with news they show you protest they show you I don't know who somebody died and things like that and you start really getting scared and you say oh I don't want to go there I'd rather be in maybe in America or in Europe or in Asia hey Malaika come say hello Malaika mama Malaika 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 mama yeah it's my other horse I think it's pregnant so Africa is not poor and also Africa is such a huge continent that you'll find diversity from each place you go I wanted to go to the other side but I realized they have closed here I want to take you to the river and we do this video in the river but um, I realize they have closed here so probably I'll come back I'll come back so it's not as poor as you think because most people think oh Africa is poor there's nothing there no there's a lot in Africa the only thing is they take too much from Africa and scare you from coming so that there is less competition for them okay in resources Africa has everything and I'll start with the weather. Every day we receive sunlight. For example, here in, in Kenya, where I am, every single day, guys, there is so, uh, the sun. Actually, that has influenced me to have solar in my own house. I use solar panels. And I'm telling you, every single day, I have power in my house. Here we don't have winter, we don't have summer we don't have i don't know what for us we have rainy season and dry season okay sometimes when it's this, like right now the rain has disappeared and it cannot disappear especially here and i'm saying here because i want to make it clear that africa is so big and in other uh, parts of africa for example namibia when i was in namibia it's a desert there so it's different but you can choose which type of climate you want if you want tropical, you can actually find it in Africa. If you want beach climate, for example, uh, you know, uh, for example here, you can go to Zanzibar, you can go to Diani, Kenya, Mombasa, you know. If you want more hot climate, you can go to Namibia, where you'll see a desert actually right there. So, as I was telling you is, Africa is such a huge continent and it offers nearly everything you want. And that's why I believe Africa is the right place for you. Because here at least you have options. You know, if, if you don't want to be in a hot area, you don't go to Namibia. You move to a place like Kenya. Or if you want still to experience like the Europe, Europe, where there are seasons like winter, summer and all these things, you can actually move to places like South Africa because they have seasons. There's a cold weather. There's a cold season, there's a hot season. Look here now, for example. Here, we have our own kitchen garden. Even though it doesn't look like they are doing very healthy, because we've, we've, moved, we've removed a lot. But the thing is, uh, we have our own vegetable, okay? We have our own vegetable. We have our own food. You can actually farm and never shop anything from outside in Africa you know one time I visited a friend of mine in 
Sacramento, California. And we had to go and buy soil. This soil here. This, this. This soil, this, this. In America, especially if you live in gated communities, you go and buy soil in a mall, okay? And you bring that soil home and you plant fruits or you plant anything. And sometimes they don't, they do not even allow you to plant a lot of vegetables around your compound because maybe it does not follow the city or something rules, you know? So here you can farm as, and you can farm anything that you want, no restrictions, okay? That's one thing. So think of a place where you can wake up in the morning and decide, I am tired of farming Sukumawiki, this is Sukumawiki, and I want to farm something else. Maybe I want to farm potatoes, sweet potatoes. You can actually farm. So that's one big advantage. You can control, not even control, you can produce what you eat in your own home. For example, in my own home right now, we eat this Kumawiki, not the only vegetable. We have different types of vegetables. And also, I can go to the market right now, local market here. Forget about people who live in the city. In the city, you go to the supermarket. But also in the city, there are areas you can easily go and get these vegetables. But me, I'm talking about village life. I'm not pulling you from a Western country to bring you to live in the city. I want you to live locally free man. Look, this here, you know, is lemon grass. You take lemon grass, another one is there. You use that to make your tea. This here, I don't know, my mom used to call it amaranthas. This, sometimes it grows naturally. This amaranthas, it's a very nutritious crop, especially in this case, vegetable that adds blood into your body these amaranthas so let's say you have blood pressure and all these things you eat amaranthas and you'll feel mm, fine fine and apart from that is there are very more other vegetables in africa that you can plant and you can be eating you can you see like right there we have bananas already growing those ones i have even a small farm that i planted in uh, Jamaican grandma's uh, farm over 200 of them if you give me one year I'll have enough food to feed my family myself and the rest of the crew you know yes so you will have food if you move to Africa and also you'll have perfect kind of weather yes it's not those extreme weathers I went to Europe uh, I was traveling, I went to 23 countries in Europe, I think a year or two years ago, summertime. And when I was in Denmark, they told me if I will not get out of the house today to see the sun like this, like the one I'm seeing here, I'll have to wait for another two weeks during summer to see the same sun. Huh? Here we have Rocio, my wife. Rocio, I'm making a video titled why you should move to Africa <laughs> okay okay you now that you've moved to Africa what is the main advantage you've seen here maybe we stand uh, okay here is okay there is a, is a or you want to go there where like under the shade under the shade mm -hmm. but that tree is quite uh, muddy muddy that muddy area. area so you can stand here uh, you as a foreigner Why do you think people should move to Africa? Uh, weather conditions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at least in this area where mm -hmm. we are. No, at least right now you've traveled around Africa. Yes. What, yes. Generally, what did you see? No, mostly it's uh, nice weather than a bad weather. Yes. Only in the south, 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 you get cold. But if you like hot, like today, mm -hmm. it's a good place because it's, every day is sunny. Can you describe Africa as hot, hot, or how can you describe the weather, especially East Africa where we are? I want to say hot, hot, hot. I've been in hottest places. Mm -hmm. At where? least they're like the the village where we are is nice, it's sunny, it's hot, but it's not like 
There are hottest places. But Techn maybe in the coast, the coast is hot. Yeah, and technically guys, what happens is in the morning, the sun rises. As the sun keeps going, midday, 1 p.m. up to around 3.30 p.m. It's the hottest time here. Hmm. Then, and it's not really like hot because I've been in Mexico, in places like Playa del Camel. It's hot. Very hot. It's hot, you are sweating, you are, your ties get really like wet. Even clothes, sometimes you, they cannot move easily like this. Like, yeah, even Puerto, the summer in Puerto is, is night and you're sweating at night. Or from 7 a.m. the sun rises and it's already, you're sweating already, like there's no break off. Tell me about the food here. What do you think of the food? The food, I like it because it's very organic. Mm -hmm. So that's a must. For uh, example, chicken here. Yeah, everything, everything is especially like, yeah, if you choose to eat animals. So far we can say everything is organic because we, we don't have a place. Actually, we don't know what inorganic is. Uh -huh. Especially here in the villages, maybe in the big cities now they have brought things like smokies or s hot dogs, you know, things like that. But yeah. here in the village, we have no idea what even a hot dog looks like. Do you think Anastasia knows what a hot dog looks like? For example, Anastasia is a girl. No, no, no. There, there is, I mean, there's not a lot of, well, here in the village, there's not a lot of food culture. But the food that they eat is very simple and very organic. So if you come here and you have a lot of skills cooking, at least the products that you will use to make your own meals will be very, very organic. Like fruits are real here. There's nothing like a, like a banana that will be, you will leave it on the table and the banana will be the same for a month. Nothing will happen. If you don't eat the papaya today, tomorrow will be bad because it's just pig from the tree. Yes. That's it. And natural that there's no like at least we are talking about the village that's yes. for sure yeah village village life village yeah. life yes. you know for example people say oh they don't have fridges there do you really think we need fridges here you, you've been now it's close to one year here yeah people want to go and buy food today eat them and forget or get them from their own farms use them and forget yes. and you get the food that is only enough for you to eat for that moment. You don't cook food like I'll eat in two days. Because other countries, people cook beef, for example, and put it in the fridge to... So, what is one thing you don't like to so far? Because this video is purely somebody maybe in America or in Asia who I'm encouraging to move to Africa because people think we are dying here. like. It's chaos here, it's disease, it's hot, it is poor, it's... And, and how can you describe actually the poverty in Africa? You, you've traveled, you've seen the poverty in Africa. How can you describe poor in Africa? Uh, I would say it's only the mindset. Mm -hmm. The mindset. There's a lot of corruption, that's something that you cannot hide. Mm -hmm. uh, so the big names are actually the ones taking and taking and taking and they don't put it on the country, you know? And then the mindset of the people because that's what they teach. That's what they teach them. But my question is, Rocio, for example, there is a, ho a, ho a home over there. I, th I think you guys can see it. Yeah. That is a home. Yes. And uh, in that house, you can give birth and have babies. Yeah. From a Western culture is, oh, what a oh, sad life. What a sad life. I'm He's so sorry. Look yeah. How the kids are growing. Yes, and they live in a mud house and things like that. Yeah. But my question actually, that even one time I had an argument with Rocio, is if you can give birth in that house and have kids in that house and the kids grow to be no more like they didn't die because of this and this and this because maybe the weather why actually have a house that you need to run electricity to run fridge to pay for water and those guys just but come to the river hey. it's because it's because uh i think also the opposite of poverty is having access to more 
luxury or more practical things. I think that, yeah, you can have a life there. You will survive. But there are easy ways to live. But and that's something that people don't implement here. But do, do you think it's the easy way or hard way that the, you've been convinced or the world has convinced people it's the easy way? Be no, for me, for me, uh, even though now I've seen both sides, I would still prefer to wake up and be able to open the sink and brush my teeth. Not to wake up, go to the river, fetch water, bring it here, but carry a heavy thing with water, cook with fire and uh, yeah. firewood. Like there's a lot of process. Like doing things here takes. But my question is. Time. Yeah, my and question what is. What the western is, what the yeah. western does, is to try to make this life easier. Like no, there is no, there is no easy. That's why they created a, no, a dishwasher. It's, it's not. It's example. not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy because you'll trade your time for it. Yeah, but you'll have yeah. to go to to a company, work there the whole yes, day, yes, to actually yes. be able to brush your teeth from. So yes. choose. Because would, everything, would is, you, a, would everything you rather is a go... trading. Everything is a trading. So yeah. exactly. We... Everything is a trading in life. We are always exchanging things. Time for money, this for this. Everything is, Ex is trading. Exactly. But in my case, mm -hmm. I, in my in my case, I speak for myself. Okay. For my in my case, I would rather have to pay for something. Not pay. Don't see it as pay. You'd rather leave your home, go somewhere in an office sit in a desk a whole month in the process but, to be able to pay because the way you're saying pay not necessarily because no, not everything the majority about... of the people <laughs> okay. the majority of the people don't get emotional <laughs> no this is heated <laughs> argument moving to africa <laughs> no the majority of the people have to wake up leave their homes go to offices work the whole day eat food in a small plastic container warm it with 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 you know? Yeah. Then have the luxury to brush their teeth yeah. from their wall. To or open the shower. Have open the shower water. and have the hot water. Yeah. But that guy over there does not have to leave his home. All he has to do is come to this river, fetch water, put some little firewood and cook and enjoy. Yeah, and that takes the entire day. So how would you like day. to spend your day? in an office which also takes an entire day or chilling in your home and is, just living a good is, life an office is not the only chance it's not the only option no we are talking not about the majority we are talking about the majority of the world a hundred percent but the majority of the sense. world it, it, that's how it operates the majority you know rocio for real 90 percent of the world operates like that my mom operates like that she has to leave home to pay for the same guys sorry my battery went off would you rather guys stay in a small house like that okay every day see your kids every day wake up every day go to a river get water brush your teeth or would you rather leave your home the whole day in an office work 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 until you are 60 because the moment you enter in that system you it's very hard for you to live That's why sometimes, for example, I, I talk about credit, you know? Yeah, but the thing is, people still here complaining and making life hard because that man wakes up at 4 a.m. and starts working on the shamba for when, when there's not even sunlight yet. Mm -hmm. They do hard physical work mm -hmm. because there's nothing like, like a machine that helps me. Maybe they have a cow that helps, you know? Yeah. But it's hard physical work. That takes time, takes effort, takes hours. We only have 24 hours. That takes many hours. But you know there are people with two, three jobs. Yes, I know, I know. So, there is so, a, so, there so is a what is not possibilities. physical? There is an infinite... As long as, you are leaving, as long as you are leaving your house going, you are going physical. There is a different levels of, of, of physical effort, for sure. There is people that are sitting working on a laptop. or There is people that are just changing products in our market it's still physical you know? it's it's still, still, eh, of course of course sometimes even it's the people. brain you know maybe somebody's a judge and they have to so yeah. so me my idea was this sometimes people really think like life in africa is very hard me after traveling 70 plus countries close to 100 i'll tell you if we do repetition is i've come to realize actually that the luxury of life is actually in africa because for example here 
a house like that or a home there's another home maybe there i think they don't have to struggle too much and at the end of the day we are living one life at one day you will just die why do you think they don't have to struggle when i don't see people oh i love my life i'm feeling i'm i feel super fulfilled in my life no, I don't see that point of view. No, because sometimes I feel like also the Western media Everybody pushes. Everybody hears like, oh, I need some money, money is yeah, not that's enough. True. And they work hard and we don't have electricity, we don't have food, we don't have this. And... So do you think we don't have food? No, we don't have food. We don't have a... Who has ever come to a home asking for food? No, no, no. But they uh, they come and ask for money. Yeah, because money is... is, is, is and they is... come and ask and ask and ask and Yeah, ask. the thing about like, money, you have to understand. Of... Oh, no, you have to understand about me, the money that they, the, the money they're asking is because they are not used to this new system, which is the modern system. Like kids have to go to school. You have to pay school fees. Or your kid is renting now in Nairobi. You have to pay for his rent. Your kid needs to buy, I don't know which book. Because a guy like that, who lives just that simple life, is not thinking of his kid asking for thousands of dollars to go and complete his schooling. Well, but that's the system that we live in also. The, the, so, everything has to be part of it. Though. Otherwise, that that is living, but in, it's, it's also missing out a lot of other beautiful things that like but, having education, being educated, knowing how to write, knowing how to read, knowing how to go and make more money than they will ever make here. So what's more money for? Knowing the luxury of taking a hot shower. For example, a those, hot shower. They can they can take shower. They can boil things, with firewood. Yeah, they boil with firewood. They mm -hmm. and they, they they pour water like this. But, but still not it's like showering. Opening, uh, yeah, but there's but, a little different thing no, that makes but think, makes a This was for free. The other one was a traded time in an office. This is not for free. This is takes that I have to. But do you understand to, but exactly? Water, you go and that is free. It's, that it's is physical. It's just a different that uh, the exchange is not money. You know. No, no, no. You know, you know. For example, I see my dad in the village here. Yes. My dad uh, has his own cows, and he wakes up in the morning, goes and looks for napier grass, and feeds his cows, and is very happy. Very so happy and very end, contented. I think at the end, I think so, that, so, that... So then I, I look at another man. Let's say he's somewhere. Working in a very tough uh, weather condition. Maybe super winter. Maybe somewhere in Canada. And all these two men are doing is to live life. So really, it does not, it does not really matter how at the end of the day you live life. As long as you're not suffering. Maybe crying for help. But... Mimi, okay, for me, the idea that if I don't have water coming from my wall, I am poor. I am against that. No, no, no. That's not. I think at the end of the day, is what makes you feel like you live life with purpose. And if you're happy in the, under the hot shower or inside of your madhouse, that's what matters at the end of the day. What I know for sure, though, that this is not the only Africa that exists. There's a lot of luxury in Africa. Also. Super luxury. <laughs> Super rich pe 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 areas People have helicopters and, and, and everything. Yes, yes, yes. And there's also hot water in, in Africa. Yeah. Let's, yes. not make, let's not make people believe that it's only mm. this. But you have all the options. And uh, guys, sometimes if you visit Africa, you may find it more expensive than your own country, especially if you do touristic stuff. Yeah. For example, right now, there's a very popular spot called Masai Mara. We can walk this way. Yeah where you can go and actually visit animals, wild animals like lions, cheetah and everything. Entry fee is $200 per person and it's till sunset. That is entry fee at the gate. For you to rent the car that will take you there, it takes another uh, minimum per day, close to uh, $250. To sleep in a hotel, another $200. So in a day you can easily spend $1,000, easy. So also the idea that you think Africa will be cheap, okay, there people have no idea of money and people are suffering, oh, no, no, no. be careful. Yes, yes. The, so, sad, the sad part is that uh, then you don't see that money in the country. You don't see good roads, you don't see a lot of things that can, can create like improvement. So that is, the thing, that is the thing that oh. I, even me, I'll say personally, Africa is missing is accountability. Yeah. But you have to understand from my own thinking, I believe that we have some powers and that's this, this is not 
playing victim or, or blaming other people. We have some powers out there that really don't want to see Africa succeed. Because if Africa succeeds, they will be suffering somewhere. Because that uranium will not arrive yeah, in there. Yeah, but who are the ones who open the doors? No, it's not like that. Sometimes they come with conditions. They tell you, okay, you are the president of this country. If you don't take this loan that we are giving you in super high interest rates, you will see. In no time, it's either deletion or coups and things like that we've seen. For example, I don't want to be very political, our neighboring country, Tanzania here, the president was so pro-African, he never lasted. So anyway, back to, should people move to Africa or not? Yes, but it really depends on what you want in life. So, imagine... But it is a, it is a, it is a place with room for opportunities, with room for growth, for, with room for a lot of things. You know, this video is targeting someone maybe sitting in their office and thinking, bro, my life here is very hard. Can I see an alternative to this life? So me, I'm, I'm telling them they should give Africa a chance. Yeah. They should come here and see what's going on. Yeah, you themselves. will find, you will find, you know, life is, life is always looking for balance. You will miss things, but you will find others that maybe the richest countries in the, in the world don't have, like people smiling. I remember when we were traveling, we met this guy from where? And in, uh, in Pemba, on the island, where we stay in a hostel, and one of the things that he was oh, saying... Oh, the guy who had moved from, he, from South Africa. He traveled also a lot. No, no, one of the guests that were with us, uh -huh. that was with the yeah. mother traveling. Oh, oh yeah, 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 they I were remember. were from, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think Germany. Maybe from Germany, Yeah, they were like from that. Germany. And one of the things that he was saying about what I love Africa so so much is people smile in Africa <laughs> and people in Germany <laughs> know because the mood is different, people is not really happy, the weather is so bad that really actually it, lower, it lowers your Vibration. serotonin, your serotonin the sun, and the endorphins that create happiness, you know. Here you just come out in the sun and there's no way that you say, oh, thank you life, for, thank you God for this day, you know, it's beautiful. Imagine for example, so, if we had a swimming pool here, every day will be a holiday. You'd wake up any day and swim. And here is the funny thing, and I'll speak for East Africa, maybe Southern Africa is different. Here, you can wake up in the morning when it's raining, but by 11, when I say morning, let's say 7 a.m., by 11, it's as hot as this. Yeah. And then by 3 p.m., it's as cool as you can imagine. Everything feels like those birds chilling over there. And you can... Im so... Or it can even rain very heavily. And then later, the sunshine shows up. Yes, yes, yes. You know? Yeah, I think the weather condition is... is what are the advantages of moving to Africa now that you've been here for one year? Uh, I will continuously say in the food. The food. The food. Knowing and, that and, other oh, places. I mean, I, for us in Latin America, we still have natural food. But other places where you go and buy fruits inside of a plastic package, uh, or everything is 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 not food anymore. It's totally. Cool. And guys, you have to understand what you and it's so you good. are what what you eat. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. people say, "Oh, I can I can get food here. We have food here," but this food have repercussions sometimes they bring diseases there is cancer there is i don't know what there is too many things i, I have have you realized like maybe the way people used to say like africa uh maybe is super poor poor and when i say poor in terms of transport and things like that health hospitals what is your take because you've been to hospitals here many times uh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. We can walk and chill in the house. Yeah. Uh, so I, I never needed anything like super big, you know, more than my, my prenatal care in this, in this case. And it's pretty okay. If you have the opportunity also, I, I haven't experienced like public uh, hospital, hospital care, but the one I go is, is more private. But there is. It's not that there isn't any hospitals, you know. There is. Even if we need to run right now, there is 10 minutes from here. 
we've, we will find doctors, you know, we will find professionals. Uh, no, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a... How can I say this? Like, there actually are things in Africa. <laughs> like, Africa is not empty. Uh, we just... Maasai taking care of cows, you know, or tribes, everything is tribal. No, there is a very side, like, go to South Africa, you will feel you're, you're in Europe. Yeah, 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 like helicopters and things yeah. like that. Nice resorts, hotels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, there are places in Africa you can't even afford to stay even two nights, I'm telling you, because they'll last you like 7,000 USD for a night. Just Google some of the expensive hotels, for example, in Cape Town, South Africa. The activities here also that take serious money. We can sit here, then we go in. Yeah. So, the idea that Africa is very poor, me, that's one thing that I've never liked because sometimes people say we are poor here, but actually when you look at things from a third eye, you realize we are very rich. And even sometimes I feel like when people keep pushing this idea that we are very poor, it makes even people from Africa believe like actually there's nothing good in Africa. That's that's what I was saying at the beginning. That it's you just know. the mindset because they implement. But if you if you are able to understand that being rich is not just a matter of money, then you understand that there is more. Maybe you have a lot of money, you have no family, you have no one around you to help you. Maybe all you have is money. And that's not being rich, you know. So. And another thing, guys, I wanted to really emphasize about uh, having money in Africa and not having money is uh, money here in Africa, if you have it, you actually feel like you are living life. And, yeah. and, and, and for someone who has lived outside there, let's say you've been in Europe or, or Asia or, or uh, America, Americas in this case, you'll actually feel the impact of money here because you'll be going to a market, the things you used to shop, especially when it comes to food, you used to shop maybe like, like maybe $50, for example. Here you can easily get it for like three to $5. Remember the other day, no, I don't know if I was with you, I was with Getiriba, we bought a whole bucket of fruits full for $3. Actually it was $2.8. So, if you have money here, but you see other things like vehicles, it's, it's a little expensive to buy them here because they have to be manufactured in Japan, be transported here, so there is like a, a lot of taxes involved, there is shipping cost, there is just buying the vehicle, there is shipping cost, then there is taxes as, as import tax. So, other things... Uh, I think every place has their own good and bad. Yes. Even the the richest places have their own problematics, you know. So, uh, you know me. The thing I I really don't like about Western countries, and with all respect, I say this, is the idea that you have to depend on something for your things to run. For example, here we can dig a borehole here right now in my compound get water and we use it in our home yeah. other places you can't do that mm -hmm. i hope that they have had feels like a pigeon has hit itself oh my god i hope it didn't hit itself because... so uh, uh, think about that that for example this water here you can dig and just have it other places i'll have for example the cost of maintaining this fish pond would be crazy it would be like first i need approvals though even here you need approvals to build but I'm, i mean like to pump water in to pump water out and oh my god here if you live in the village you have a luxury to have your own water like right now we have our own electricity through solar but which could be costly but i'm just showing you that you can easily live off the grid and just enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what about other places that is not the village would you recommend to move in Africa? So let's say if you are not... Me, I personally, I don't like city life. Yeah. Because it still gives me the vibe of I'm trapped here. Yeah. 
Uh, but I like more of um, beach areas. I love to have my shirt open and feel the breeze and ride even a bicycle on a sunny, sunny Sunday afternoon, you know, and go and stop by and buy a coconut and enjoy. Something like that. Yes, but again, it all depends. For example, if you really want to move to Africa and still, let's say, open a company, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have a company in the village because there are no, custom, exactly. there are no exactly. customers. There are no customers here. And if there are, they will not pay you like any significant amount of money. Yeah. But if you, if you want to open a company, you can move to the, to the big city where you will jiggle your way out. And there, I feel like right now is not what I can recommend people to move. But it does not mean you cannot move. It's still much better. You can still get organic food. You can even buy food from your neighborhood. There, there's, we call them mama mboga, ladies that sell organic food. You know, the idea is run away from this big. You yeah, know, like yeah, that's something that, for example, I I like about Latin America that still exists. I don't buy grocery in the supermarket. I can still go to the small shops that sells all the grocery and fruits that comes more natural. And even you have the more organic, organic stores, you know. Mm -hmm. But places like America, sorry, America, but it's the truth. There's nothing like a ir a la verduleria <laughs> to the grocery store. Because maybe you can find the organic, super expensive and, and hard to get, but otherwise everything you have to go, you, the, the supermarket is the only choice to buy spinach inside of a plastic bag. And most of the time, like uh, the, ch the cheap supermarkets don't have organic foods or, no, yeah. or stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I, I was like in... This dollar store. Yeah, 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 I was in New York and... Same, and yeah. And a friend of mine told me we should go shopping somewhere in the, in the Bronx. And I said, why? He said, yeah, it's, more, it's more affordable there, but the foods are not like the ones we will buy here in Manhattan. So, and, and, and one thing I always ask myself is this. For how long will you try to fit in, in a system that actually every day drains you, you know? For how long? For how long? Because one day maybe your body will feel tired. Maybe you'll get old and be like, oh, bro. Yeah. And another thing I love about Africa is even with the old people when they retire, we don't send them to homes. You know, that's, that's something very strange. I, I have noticed with other countries that if my mom becomes old, I send her to an old, old, old home people. I don't know how, even how they call it. Here in Africa, you stay with your parents, with your grandmother until their last day. And we don't see it as, as a burden, as, as, oh, you know, because the idea is family comes first. And apart from that is nothing is more important than family, not your job. Not, and another thing you have to understand is in Africa, you can actually survive without really having a lot of money. Like you can yeah, eat. Yeah, that's true. That's why they have so many kids and <laughs> yeah, like money here, in the pocket. But yeah, that's one thing also you guys will be asking. Maro, but there are a lot of kids suffering there. Mm -hmm. The idea of having kids in Africa is not anyhow related to finances. Mm -hmm. It's the idea is how many do you want? Like me now, I want 10. Because I know in Africa here, it has never been an issue. But nowadays, because of the systems of going to school, you, and sometimes there is like private school, there is this, oh, and now the Western world is catching up slowly. But has it been, been free, the education here? Yeah, it was free. It was free. Yes. But nowadays they are introducing like school uniform and shoes and three textbooks. So it's, again, creeping back to not to be free, but it used to be free, for example, Kenya. Oh, okay. Yes. But you see, in this video, we're talking about generally in Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even if, for example, you, you earn money in US dollar and you live in an African village, you are king because school fees will be like at most $500 for someone in high school mm -hmm. in, in one semester. Here we call them terms. So for one year, that will be even one year, you know, one year school fees, like 500 USD, around 65,000 to 70,000 Kenyan shillings you but pay for a whole year. education is good? Yeah, that's why I speak English. 
I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I mean, for sure, because it's... I'm, I'm bred here. I went to... And most people here believe if you take your kids to regular schools, which are public schools, they grow stronger, you know? Private is good to pampa and they... <laughs> yeah, well, in Argentina. Mia morcita, kind of <laughs> you know, you know, pampa, pampa. <laughs> yes. Guys, let's know what you think. And also, if you've been to Africa before or you live in Africa, what are your thoughts about this? Should people actually move to Africa right now or not? Um, and uh, let's say you are a young guy, you want a dating culture in Africa. You how I, I know how we're in a relationship, but so far, what have you seen about dating culture or noticed, especially in the village? And the village is worst case scenario, but if you go to the city, life is very different there. I don't see anything like that, like dating. No. <laughs> what do you see? I only see like maybe now because he told told me, but but maybe if you see you go in the street, you see the girl on one side and the boy on that other side. Those ones are are like getting to know each other, but there's nothing like holding hands and things like that. Uh, and yeah, there's nothing like oh, I take you somewhere for a date. Let's go meet. I don't know. That can happen. I don't know. Like my my case was very different with you. But. That can happen, uh, mostly in the big cities. But in the village, you'll find the, the boy and the girl somewhere in the forest road and just talking and and standing there and drawing lines on the. That still happens here. But what I was actually trying to say is, uh, Africa still has room for an organic dating culture, where you can actually stop a lady and she'll not feel like offended or should not feel like uh, sexualized, you know what I mean, or sexualized in this way, because in other countries nowadays, it's like, oh, why you, that's all you saw, this is you, oh, he's sexually harassing me and things like that, then, oh. so it's, it's pushed a culture where even men don't want to approach women because they fear, the fear of being just judged or even put in prison for just trying to get to know the other person. And also, another thing here, it's still very organic. You can easily go to a club, to a church. You can meet on people on the road and stop them. We still have a dating culture in Africa. We still have. And when I say Something dating there. culture, it's not like taking you to, to a fancy place and, and no. I still mean like it's still organic that men and, and women can meet and talk and it's never criminalized or seen as, oh, you're intruding my space or you're creepy or you're all this. Yeah. We still have a culture where actually, for example, if you've been talking to a girl and she's coming to your house, she already knows what she's coming for. It's not like other places where you are weighing yourself, like you are measuring. Hey, if I touch her, that will be already, I may go to jail. So it keeps like this distance and here still, men and women still need each other. It's not like any other country out there that I've seen people saying, oh, we are strong and independent, we don't need you. Here we still. For example, have you ever seen a lady here in the, in the village saying, I am strong and independent? No, no, no. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Here, people actually still... That's actually something that I really like. And, and of course, we repeat again, we are talking from our own experience and where we are staying, maybe yes. somewhere else in, in Africa is different and we don't know. Maybe in Cape Verde is different, and, we and, don't know. In my case, I'm talk about what I learned from the village. Uh, I respect everybody's decisions, but I like the fact that men are men and women are women. And, and the feminine energy is very present in the woman and the masculine energy is very present in the man. That's something that if you want your children to be raised here, uh, they will have, you know, I've seen, we have seen like people living in their countries, like, you know, we saw a family, let's say, and yeah, I yeah. want to move from out from Canada because they are trying to push and yeah, yeah. down my kids and things yeah. like that, which that is true. That is true. There is a lot of agendas going on to brainwash kids, especially because they are yeah. nurturing ones, you know, 
and there are things that are natural and there are things that are not and i i feel like here you can see the most natural yeah way like actually and here we we don't even if it exists it's like hidden like it's not so exposed like you can go to a class and find you know all this yeah. you can't find those things here in Africa. but there are other things that i don't like at all that i feel like Africa should improve mm -hmm. and in terms of when the things are should change a hundred percent because not everything is perfect here there's things also that need to change like uh teachers beating kids in the school that's yeah. a no here they get discipline here that's if, a no. if that's, you if your kid is rude don't bring him to Africa. He will get super. He, That's a no. Teacher discipline. Down. Chua, yeah. chua, chua. Even me, I went through that system. <laughs> no, that's and a no. I still support. That's a no. And okay. there's also, I think there is a lot of, um, uh, a lot of abuse also in like marriages, like women getting beaten by their husband and things like that. But it's uh, changing, it's changing. Oh, I, I, can, I, so. I can't I say it's changing so. because so. me, when I grew up, I saw this so, so deep. But if I see today, it has changed. Mm -hmm. yeah, a long time ago, it was very normal. Like it, even me, I thought it's a normal thing to do to your wife. Yeah. But now that we've grown, things have actually changed. You know, a long time ago, we didn't have police stations around even our villages. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like we used to have a guy called Mzewa Nyumbakumi. A man that that oversees the first ten houses around him. Uh -huh. Then from there, this man, several of them, then will have a chi sub chief, uh -huh. then a chief. Uh -huh. Then from there, police station. Uh -huh. But nowadays we have police station like here. We have one here. We have another one there. So nowadays those type of abuses are not highly reported. We can say it has really reduced. In the 90s, when I was growing up, it was normal. It was normal to wake up and hear your neighbor's wife crying, woo, and you say, oh, the husband is beating. And like, it, it's like, it used to be like when a kid is crying. Yeah. But now those things have really changed. Right. And nowadays you can go and report. You know, things have really changed. I can say that one has improved. Though it could be there, but it's not like the way it used to be. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, that's important for sure. There are good things and bad things everywhere. Um, and also another thing that is also very good. You are not here, at least you are not exposed to many things that can kill yourself as different types of drugs or alcohol or things like that here or even smoking here. Not everybody. It's very weird that if you find someone smoking here, yeah. a few ones, yeah. it's not like it's not like so 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 Common. impregnant in the community that everybody's it's lighting more, a cigarette no. as a normal thing. Mm. Or nine out of ten has tried, I don't know, see drugs. You know, yeah, I don't yeah. want to see that, like like a normal. Oh, I tried once. You know, some people, some kids here have no idea what that is. Yeah and they have not access Actually, to all those things. Here, the drug that is so much is yeah. called Chang'a. Uh -huh. And this is like local liquor. It uh -huh. looks like this water, very clear. But if you drink like this, you yeah, are gone. Yeah, so there's very, also that's, that's uh, it has like some good in it, you know, because it's such a special drink that the ones who drink here are actually drunkards yeah, and yeah, are yeah, totally yeah. wasting life, yeah, you know, yeah. totally wasted. So there's a lot of, oh, I don't want to be like that, so yes. I don't do it. So you can find a lot of sober people, you know, 100%. that have never tried alcohol, that yeah. never, it's not like for us, it's so normal to go to a bar with your friends, you drink one beer and that's totally normal because you can manage, you can handle one beer, two beers, nothing's going to happen. But here's the ones who drunk are, are drunkards. And they have serious problems and yeah. they die for alcohol. Actually, they die for alcohol. So it's, it's, it's actually very interesting, you know, how yeah. strong but minimum is that actually makes the rest of the people not to join that Yeah, group. yeah, yeah, they fear. Because it's not normal. It's not just drinking one beer and, and saying, the day goes by and yeah. maybe tomorrow we drink another one and that's it. Here is you drink or you don't. So I think there's good in that as well, you know. 
All right, guys, in the next section of this video, I'll be talking about building your dream house in Africa. How does it take you? What does it take you? Because I've built one house here. You guys every day see it on my vlogs. But very soon we'll be leaving for Argentina. And uh, maybe you want to come to Africa and you don't know where to start from. You're asking, hey, Marwa, how should I start even buying land and things like that? But I'll say one thing, that if you buy land in, in, in the village, village, rural Kenya, for example, Kenya in this case, when you buy land, they write till forever. Here we don't lease, we don't lease land. You buy, when you're buying, they write till forever. And also another thing is we don't have property taxes of lands here in, in the village. And I'm talking about Kenya specifically. They wanted to introduce that. That's why you saw there was huge protest here. They wanted to bring those American system where every year they bring like property tax, the number of cars you have, cows. And you know, people who are pushing this idea, they are from, they are there, they have brought money here and they want to force us to be peasants in our own, uh, our own motherland. And people say no, for example, in Kenya. But maybe in Tanzania, they could be having different rules. You should maybe there, there you pay. I don't know. And you guys, if you're from different countries, let us know, especially in Africa, let us know about property taxes and things like that. But one thing I can let you know is it's cheaper building a house in the village than anywhere else. Let's say in Kenya, in this case. Uh, for example, I'll say here we get water. You can easily get water. Labor is available. And labor here, imagine, you pay workers 400 Kenyan shillings to 500. That is uh, $4, $3, to at most $4.50. Those are guys that help you to mix the concrete or they help the mason to work. And that is not me. That is a normal price here. And again, you have to understand that according to the economy of Kenya, that is good money. Sometimes I see people saying, oh, Marwa, uh, that person, how can he be paid only $50 a month? That is the economy here. So if, if you are coming with more money from the other side, you will enjoy the economy here. Maybe that's where the dollar will, or the euro or the peso or the yen will, will have power here. Because here, for example, a tipper of sand, okay, or a truck of sand goes for $50 here in the village. But somewhere in Nairobi, the same tip of sand or Mombasa could easily go four to five times the same expenses. So it depends where you are. And um, that is one thing you have to understand. But before also you buy land here, make sure you have due diligence. Due diligence and trust people because also that's one thing I've realized is a scam here in Africa. Mm -hmm. People trick you to buy land and you realize this land does not even belong to the person you gave your money to. Mm -hmm. So anytime you want to do major transactions, do your due diligence in Africa. But you can easily get land, especially from the villages, from anything $4,000 up. Mm -hmm. Easy. $4,000 up. Easy. That's a half a million Kenyan shillings. Easy. But it depends also the... You know, if it's in Nairobi, you can never get something like that. For example, in big cities, you can't. But I'm talking about Kenya in this particular case. Maybe somewhere Cape Town, South Africa, that is even money for just a lawyer. Yeah. Maybe. But here in the village, if you want to live simple life, but making noise like that, you can easily do that. Okay. From 4,000, 5,000, up to 10,000 depending on the size of the land. You know, there are things that people consider when they're selling land. But it's much cheaper. And here land, you own it forever. Remember that, forever. Let's go in, Rocio. Then I will end my video there. I need to come and feed my, my birds with this. Yes, I need to come and feed my birds with this. And we need to go. We need to go to Migori? Yeah. Okay, so in a few minutes, will be going you see the tree has directly picked up but i realized somebody you see broke it but this one yeah, but it's okay we'll grow this one is doing super great you see beautiful yeah let's go in guys 
So in building your house, things like tiles, uh, you know, uh, like any other place, when you, buy, when you buy construction materials, they are being taxed by the government. So that's very normal here, and it depends. Uh, for example, cement in the village is more expensive than in Nairobi or the big cities. And the reason is because here, it has to be transported from the industry all the way to the village. So that adds some cost or it makes the, uh, the item pricey. But if, for example, you live in Nairobi, it, it becomes more cheaper. So there are both advantages of living in big cities and, and in the villages, things like that. And also buying things like coaches, these ones, you'll have to buy as anyone, any other person who lives anywhere in the world because the prices are nearly the same. There's no major changes. Or buying things like this, lights, those ones, the price will be nearly as equal as any other place in the world. Uh-huh. Here in Africa, people can say they know how to do something and they don't know, just because they want to receive your money. So be careful with also that idea. Sometimes somebody can say, I'm a good mason, I'm a good engineer, I am this, 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 this. Okay, you give them the job, you give them the money, but they may not provide uh, for actually what you signed for. So be careful with that. And then sometimes I, I, if people are coming, I recommend people who have worked in my home, you've seen their work. And if they mess you there, also be honest to say, oh, you know, Maro, this guy worked very well in your home, but in my home they didn't work very well. So that will also help them to, this will help other people to put them in the spot and they will do their job. So, are you planning to move to Africa? Personally, I would say, please move to Africa because I'm thinking like 10 years from now, these cheap things like land, these, these houses, you may not be able to afford. And the way the Western big corporations are pushing, coming into these markets, you have to make hay when the sun shines. The earlier you do it, the better. Africa is a beautiful place. Look, just chilling like this, looking at outside, see the birds here, the weather is amazing, the trees. Yes, but as I told you also, Africa is such a huge continent that if you go to Namibia, it will be a different vibe. If you go to South Africa, it will be a different vibe. If you come here in East Africa, it's a different vibe. And also remember, apart from that, there's a lot of opportunities in Africa, especially business opportunity. It's a continent that is growing, it has a lot of potential. You can open your company here. You can bring your tech company here. I'm telling you. And Africa is open for business, you know? But I feel like the more young people like Maro are growing and more other young people and understanding what Africa can offer for its own people, maybe there will be no space for you if you keep delaying every step that you are doing right now. OK, Rocio. Last comment, should people move to Africa or no? Or they just come and see for themselves? You choose, Rosie. Yeah, coming and seeing for themselves is always the best thing to do. Anywhere you decide to move, just go see for yourself. Try to see if you vibrate with the place, with the environment. How many countries have you been in Africa? In Africa? Yes, including Kenya. Uh, ten, ten. Ten. Which were your favorite so far? Um, I would say, I would, I would say, Namibia, South Africa, and Malawi. I really like them. Okay. Uh, Why Malawi? I thought Malawi was not so developed. Exactly. Why? If you, if you, it's funny because Malawi is was like the, the less development the, the less developed in South Africa the most one. But the energy in Malawi, the people in Malawi, I don't know, it was so special. Very I, special. I felt so happy there. I was yeah. feeling so whole, so happy. You remember how we walked in the village of George yes. to yeah. go and, and like like around eight PM at night, people yeah. are walking with radios on their hand. Yeah. 
yeah. and they went for, to a small town, yeah. uh, Kande. The taxis are bicycles. The taxis are bicycles. <laughs> yes, I really like that. I really like that. But there was not even roads. So, uh, I mean, there was nothing related to how developed is the country. I really like South Africa. South Africa was like amazing uh, in terms of uh, development. Infrastructure. But it was infrastructure, but it was also in Malawi, we were feeling super safe. Yeah. Thing that didn't happen in, Mal in South Africa. South Africa is actually one of the most dangerous, I would say. Maybe Nigeria is even more chaotic, but I haven't been. But South Africa was super developed, but also like you have to be super careful, like kind of like feeling like Nairobi. Yeah. But, but South Africa is beautiful, beautiful, well developed. So yeah. Namibia, you remember Namibia? And Namibia, I really like Namibia. Namibia. Yeah, even in the shopping malls we went, especially the capital Windhoek. It was it was clean. It was like nice development. Also, for sure, you always have the both sides of the coin. How about Botswana? Botswana, Botswana. Gaborone, where we went even to yeah. Kanye village. Yes, yes. Was very nice. I remember the village there were like uh, brick houses. Yeah, but you'll still home. choose uh, Namibia over Botswana. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. There was some magic in Namibia. I really like the desert the, with the ocean. It was very unique. And so so Komun. So Komun was a very charming yeah. place. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So guys, that will be the end of today's video. It's time for you to move to Africa. And I think next year I will try my level best to create a space that you guys can come. I can even like host a few of you uh, and, and we take you around. I can give you some tours. I plan to buy a touristic car. Uh, and if you, you're already out there, you wanna buy that car, it can be staying here and we can open a company. No problem. We can find a way. Or also you think that is too much mingling. Let's say if you have somebody out there yeah. who has money and he says, Maro, let's buy the touristic car. Pole pole, Jamen. Pole pole, it's a film video. They put a lot of... <laughs> uh, I would recommend you to always, if you can, can be your own company, be your own company. Yeah, I think that's much Rather much. than, I think, the second choice would be partnership with someone. But if you can do it, you can be the, the owner and the yeah. boss, it's always better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you'll avoid conflicts, unnecessary conflicts that, that are, are not needed. So, guys, uh, there is a guy out there who wants my help. That guy is a musician. So he, he has always said he wants... He wants help to do his music. But I told him right now, I don't have a studio. He has to wait. Okay, let's go out there. I'll finish my video with him. Then from there, we catch a bike to Migori. But that one will be off camera, okay? Yes, guys. Look the dolls in Africa, guys. If you have money, you can actually buy serious dolls. Look. This is bulletproof. And I'm not just trying. Look how thick that she <laughs> See? And people tell you Africa people are dying. There is nothing. Look at that door. Wow. Straight from the Congo. Okay, Rocio. Let me talk to this guy. And, and, and then we see. Then we head to Migori. Okay, don't make promises. Oh, okay. Thank you. Rocio tells me not to make promises. That is one of my biggest problems nowadays I'm facing. Yes. Making promise. Sometimes I should stop. And sometimes I don't even when I make those promises. I, that's something I'm working on nowadays. I don't know, it's because sometimes I feel I, I can assist, I can help, I can. Mura! Uh, Namnagan! Hey, you speak English, right? Yes. So, what's your name? My name is Morris. My real name is Morris John. Morris John? Yes. This is who? This is just a toy. Toy. Adoria. What's the name? I don't know the name. You don't know the name? Yeah. Okay. So how do you want me to help you today? Yes, I'm and, 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 and here is the camera you can talk so people can actually know. Yes. 
Uh-huh. Any help I can accept, ma'am. So, guys, this guy is, is from the village here. Um, he came the other day here asking for help. Uh, I told him when... Okay, what type of help were you looking for? Yeah. I've, I want to talk loud so that people yes, can hear you. <coughs> the most help I can now... I, I can say I want... Yes. The phone. A you phone? Know, yeah, it will help me a lot because I want to do more in music than being a content creator like you. Okay. Yeah, and that is my dream. So you don't have a phone? Yeah, so far I don't have a phone. Since last year, I was here when I was working here at the Kleber there. Mm -hmm. My phone cracked. So I've been struggling to at least to buy another phone and I've missed them. Okay. Many works, mm -hmm. but I still... So, so not get them but you have a local number. If somebody wants to talk to you, they can talk to you. Do you have a place where they can communicate? Yeah, I have a phone. Okay. I have a place where they can, I can communicate. So you have which type of phone? The small one? Yeah, the button phone. Okay, so put your number here. Yes. Guys, if you feel you want to contribute to him uh, to get a phone, you can, okay? Me, I'll give him some small cash, you too, so he can buy a phone. Plus 254? 13, 28. Okay. 72, 31. So two, it does not have a seven? It's a 254, uh -huh. seven, okay. 13, 28, 72, 31. Let's repeat that number. Guys, if you want to support him to get a phone, you can send him anything, even if it's one dollar, two dollars. He's been in my, in my home here every day. Uh, all he first he came, he told me, Mara, I want you to help me to be doing my music. Now he doesn't have a phone. But I've promised him. What did I promise you? I've free pass to record my music next year. Tell me you'll have a music production. I'll have a music like, production. Yeah, and tell me you'll give me a free pass. A free pass? Yeah, yes, I promised you. That is all. I'll, I'll still stay on that. Because if I'll have a, a studio there, I'll make sure anytime you come here to record your music, you come and do your work. And God will help you, you know? Yeah. So plus two, no, plus 254, 7, 13, 13 28, 28, 72, 72 31. 31. Thank you guys. This is where the video will end. And I want to say thank you always for being Team Mara. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for supporting other people like this young brother. What's actually your name? Jo you Ma said? Maurice John. Maurice John. But in the, that number is John Rioba. John Rioba. Yeah. Rioba is your local name. Yeah. Rioba actually means sun, guys. Like the sun. Yeah. in my very native language i want to say thank you guys thank you for supporting me thank you for supporting john already i believe something will happen uh, just for him to have a phone how do you think the phone will will affect you in a good way yeah it will mostly i will now i will look like let me say like continue doing music like downloading beats okay like doing working no practice practicing more more in other beats like okay I can say I do more beats on hip hop. I cannot try to do other like R and B, okay. Afro beat. Yeah, that one will help me so much. Okay. So that when I start a music. And for for how long have you been a musician? Four years. Four years. Remember, 2020 I met you. Yeah, 2020. You. Yeah, but I promised you when I have my studio here, you will have what? A free pass. Yes. Pass. I am. I'll, so I'll give you one thousand. Uh, somebody can contribute little by little you get even a phone okay thank you so much man. I, so guys i think i'll end the video there i want to say thank you so much i just wanted to put this and this is one thing we are saying in africa sometimes we have a lot of things but the opportunity to actually make money most of the time it's very hard because all the villagers make small small money and for you for example to work hard and and, and afford a phone is not that easy if this guy lived for example in america he would easily go and even collect rubbish one or two weeks, he will have his phone. And also another thing you have to understand in Africa is we own stuff. It's very hard to find people loaning. Let's say you go to a shop to loan to get a phone. Nowadays there are those programs here, but they are not common. Here if, for example, I build this house, it's mine, I don't have any debts, no bank, nothing. Most of the time it operates like that. That's why you see a young guy like that could have an issue of having a phone since last year, and this is September 2024. 
I want to end my video here, and it's time for me to invite you to Africa, special way, but for now we'll not be here. I'll also put my email here. You can write me, and also tell us what we've discussed in this video, if they actually... It's true, according to you, maybe, maybe you live in a different African country, things could be different there. Please drop your comments here. And support uh, Rio Bajon, okay, to get him a phone. He put his number there. I'll be happy if I hear, oh, Mara, uh, I'm going to buy that guy a phone. Just a phone. Maybe you'll have changed. You know me, I fight a lot of battles, so sometimes. <sighs> Thank you, people. Bye-bye. All I need is you, baby, baby Over How much do I need to party here in Jamaica? Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles. So I'm officially saying goodbye to Japan. As you see, sir, welcome to Japan. Where is Elisa? Soy de España. I'm heading to.